Hey, Jillian. Hey, Brian. And hey, Sydney. Thanks for having me on AWS On Air. Super excited to be here. Yes, super excited to talk about this. So, um, Nitesh, for those who are new to AWS and Amazon Aurora, how would you describe what it is to them? So Amazon Aurora is a database that gives customers commercial grade performance at one tenth the price. Uh, the best part about Amazon Aurora is that it's open source compatible. It comes in MySQL and PostgreSQL editions. So customers can get the choice that they want on open source without any sort of lock-in. Uh, like Jonathan already covered, Postgres is super extensible. So anything the community puts in any of MySQL or the PostgreSQL technologies, Aurora already benefits from it. And in addition, we launched features like Graviton3 instances, uh, which are running on Aurora. We also launching Aurora I Optimized, which I'm excited to talk about. And uh, we continue to build these innovations for our customers. Awesome, neat. Can't wait to jump in. Um, so should we do a quick intro? Um, Nitesh, what do you do here? Or what do you do at AWS? Sure, yeah. So I'm a principal product manager on Amazon Aurora. I've been in AWS for about three years now. Um, work mostly on open source technologies. And on Aurora, I've been focused mostly on building features around export, around data API, which lets customers pull data easily from Aurora and Gravit helped launch the Graviton2 instances. And now the Amazon Aurora I optimized, which gives customers price flexibility for their applications. Yeah, I think if you could dive into that a bit more um, for, so let's talk about for the, Customers who are new to Amazon Aurora, um, really, how does this IO optimize help them be able to think about um, if they should be using Aurora and, and how to really adopt it? Sure. Um, so the first one, customers who are not familiar with Aurora, I do want to tell them that most customers, when they start using Aurora, they are charged for three primary dimensions or three primary charges for their database, which is number one, the servers or the instances, as we call them and customers can create up to 15 uh, instances of read replicas in an Aurora instance, uh, in an Aurora cluster. Uh, in addition, they pay for storage, which again, Aurora storage is our unique distributed storage layer, which is disaggregated from the compute and it's auto scaling. So customers only pay for what they use. And finally, IO, which is input output operations uh, to read and write data to Aurora. And sometimes we also consume IO when we are doing operational activity on your databases, like auto vacuuming on Postgres consumes IO. Um, so what we heard from customers is that, yeah, I get this storage part, I get the instances, but I'm struggling with IO. And these customers are either customers who are, for example, running a database on premise because they are used to just buying a server, buying a computer, paying for that, and then just buying a storage as a network product and just paying for that. And that's all they pay their charges never fluctuate. But the benefit of moving to cloud and AWS is you only pay for what you use. But when you're using something like Aurora, which is being used internally by your or by your customers across multiple applications, multiple develop, developers are writing and reading to it, it's very hard to nail down how much IO you will consume. Uh, so based on that feedback, we decided to launch Aurora IO Optimized, which only charges you for compute and only charges you for storage. So this lends itself really well to customers who are used to paying for just those two things, whether it be on-premises, other providers, or other sort of deployments for databases. Um, and yeah, I think that's what led us to I Optimized. Nice, and so how should current Aurora users think about sticking with the Aurora standard or versus IO Optimized? I think you just talked about it a little bit, but diving into the IO Optimized, like what does that really mean? Yeah, so for I optimized, when I say that, there invokes a few things, right? But primarily what I want to tell customers is it's price predictability for all applications. Um, there are customers in some sectors who want a predictable bill upfront no matter what. Now, they could be customers who are buying databases and then they are amortizing their costs over multiple years and months. Or there are companies that want to project their financial spending on their infrastructure months in advance with the current model which is we know what we now call aurora standard that might be a bit hard to do because it's variable because of the io component with io optimized because you only pay for storage and compute it's very easy to predict those costs up front uh, because customers are used to doing that in addition uh, there are customers in specific industries that use aurora which would lead to high io costs because they are potentially doing 
a lot of reads, a lot of writes. For example, we have a customer in the financial sector that does fraud detection. And when they're doing fraud detection, they are scanning a lot of data to give their end customers a report on like, this is the sort of fraud activity we saw. Um, there are other customers that, for example, have bots that crawl a lot of data in Aurora. And based on the crawling, they'll figure out, hey, should I show this thing on my website or that? And that, again, consumes a lot of IO. Uh, and we dub those applications as IO intensive applications. And what I mean by that is we define those as anywhere where your IO is more than 25% of your database spend. So if you're an IO intensive customers, you might, you will benefit from going to the Aurora IO optimized model. Or if you value price predictability above all else, then you can also go to the Aurora IO optimized model. But if you're like, yeah, I don't really know what my workload is like. Uh, I might see some spikes, like let's say over the weekend or something, but overall I don't really use it as much. Then Aurora standard, which is our pay as you go model still makes a lot of sense. Um, so that's what I would tell customers. And finally with, both these models, customers get price predictability. And not only that, uh, sorry, price flexibility. So what I mean by that, they can easily switch between these models. We don't lock them into one or the other. Uh, they can always just move easily once every 30 days. Uh, and so if their workload patterns change, then they can do that. For example, one of the largest customers of Aurora Postgres is Amazon.com. Our own Amazon.com, we run all our fulfillment centers on that technology. So they potentially around Prime Day could move to Aurora I optimize, right? Then they just have, because there are all these orders coming in, people are placing orders. We're trying to figure out the fulfillment model and sending these orders to the right place. And so with I optimize, they'll just see the straight bill. They won't see these fluctuating IOs uh, during that time. So that could be one use case uh, for why customers would adopt I optimized. It's really neat that customers can switch back and forth too for when they need it. Like what? So if I was a standard customer now and I wanted to switch to IO, what would I actually have to do to switch? Like what's the experience like? It's literally one click in the console or you can just uh, make a call in the API and you can make that switch. So if you go to the AWS management console, you scroll down, you'll modify your existing cluster and there'll be a section called cluster configuration. And there you will see both the Aurora IO optimized and Aurora standard so if you right now you would see Aurora standard as selected, it's a radio button, and then you literally just select I optimize, apply those settings either immediately or in your next maintenance window, and then boom, you're switched. Your bill changes um, because on I optimized, we are charging you a thirty percent premium on your instances or an uplift on instances and a one twenty five percent uplift on storage, uh, and then that just helps you move in between those and make those decisions. Um, and once you apply that, you will see that bill immediately. But it's also worth noting, we don't stop metering or measuring the IOs your database is consuming behind the scenes. So what this means is even if you switch to IO optimized, you can see how much IO you're consuming. So it helps you make a decision in the future if you want to go back to standard because you're like, oh yeah, I'm not really consuming that many IOs. My application is not that write or read intensive. I can go back to standard. Or if you see it's too much, then you go back to iOptimize. So you always have that data point to help you make that decision. I love that advice. I'm so glad, Sydney, that you asked that question because that was something that was on my mind too as you were saying that. Um, I love the advice that you just gave to people about how they think about the different options and that, that they can be able to switch between the two um, as they're thinking about how to cost optimize as their needs change for their business. Um, so does this... Can you just clarify, like, does this impact Aurora serverless or list completely separate? Yeah. So one of the benefits of uh, having a database on AWS and especially on Aurora and RDS is you get a choice in compute options, right? You get Intel instances like the R5, R6i, which we launched recently. You also get a choice of Graviton instances, the R6G. And we're also excited to announce literally yesterday, we launched R7G for Amazon Aurora which gives you 20% better price performance than the R6G instances. So you have a lot of choice on compute for what we call the provisioned instances where you basically buy a database and it sits there. Aurora Serverless V2 uh, scales in fine grain increments. It's basically auto scaling compute. Um, and we charge you for Aurora compute units or ACUs and it scales in 0.5. So what this means for Aurora Serverless V2 customers is there is also an IO optimized option and we basically charge you an uplift on your ACU price, which right now is 
uh, 0.09, I believe, ACU per hour. And now on, I optimize, at least in North Virginia, it'll be 0.12 per ACU hour. Nice. It sounds like there's a range of choices based on what the customer needs and what the customer wants. And it sounds like it's also very easy to transition between if maybe needs change. Awesome. Yeah. I do want to mention that in addition to the provision instances and Aurora Serverless V2, we also support, obviously, reserved instances, right? Like a lot of customers buy reserved instances so they commit to aws for a year or three years in different payment options uh, and they were curious like hey will i be able to benefit from i optimize if i was using ris and, and the great news is yes i reserved instances are supported on the aurora i optimize model and what i mean by that is aurora would automatically behind the scenes account for the 30 percent price uplift that i shared earlier when you use when you switch an existing ri to i optimized uh, but you do usually when you switch RIs, you usually have to do a cancel and a rebuy, as our customers like to say. But with I optimize, you don't need to do that. Behind the scenes, when you switch, we'll just account for the difference. And every hour, let's say you consume a specific number of units, as we call them, we call them normalized units uh, per hour that are consumed on I on standard, will just be consumed faster on I optimize because it's 30% more. So we'll, like your same RI will get consumed 30% faster. So you would have to buy potentially more RIs or just pay the on-demand price for the remaining usage. Um, so we support the whole breadth of our compute options and payment plans. It's a really good call out uh, on the RIs. Um, I know there was something that you wanted to um, quickly show everyone so I can pull up uh, your screen if you yeah. wanted to talk through this. Yeah, so I just wanted to share this. This is probably the one slide that we're really excited to show our customers uh, to show how you benefit from IO Optimize, right? Like I said, you get predictable pricing for applications, especially if you have really variable IO workloads. And this is a customer that had a really variable IO workload, right? The orange line is instances, the blue line is IO, and the rest is other and storage. Usually customers spend 95% on instances, IO and storage combined. Um, so before I optimized, when they were on the or a standard model, you can see the blue line is causing a lot of fluctuation, right? It's fluctuating up and down, and you see a lot of variability there as the data access pattern changes. Now, when they switch to I optimize, you can see immediately, like, yeah, the instances go up a little bit because there's a 30% uplift, and the storage also goes up a tiny bit, but now your bill is very steady, right? It's hold steady. And no matter what you do with your data access pattern, that will not reflect on the bill anymore because you're not paying for IO anymore. It's bundled into your usage. I think the best way to think about it is, and I think we spoke about as Jillian, is the a la carte model or the buffet all you can eat model. Uh, because even on I optimize, we are not throttling you. We're not slowing you down. We are not like doing anything behind the scenes. You you're only limited by the bandwidth of your compute, right? Like the, the instance that you provisioned, the, the server that you have that you're pushing traffic through That's and your cluster configuration overall. That's the only thing that sets the limit, which is true today as well. So there are no changes there for IO consumption for customers. This picture really does show a thousand words as far as predictable pricing. Yeah, so I think we covered so far predictable pricing and giving customers an easy to understand model and price predictability. Uh, and like I mentioned, R7G gives customers better performance, but I optimized also gives customers better price performance. Uh, so when customers switch from standard to I optimize for their cluster, they will see some performance improvements, uh, especially right now we have made some improvements in the communication between our Aurora instance or the head node as we call it and our distributed storage layer. Um, so those improvements will also give customers better performance. So they're getting, they don't have to pay for IO, they're getting a predictable bill and better price performance. Exciting week um, in, in, all the, in Aurora um, and all things databases, right? So um, Tesh, I guess, where can people go if they wanna really learn more about Aurora IO Optimize? Yeah, we can share the link. Uh, they can either go to the news blog, Jeff Barr has written one recently uh, they can also go to their AWS console or the RDS console, and there are banners there to let you get started with IO Optimize, and you can just create a new cluster to get started. I can also paste a link on the on the news blog that we posted. One second. All right. Um, and then while we're waiting for that, um, we have a survey. So please fill out the survey. We 
really want to hear your feedback. We actually do read the surveys. So please fill out the survey. The first 10 respondents get a $10 AWS credit. Um, yeah. Zeman Bean has posted the link. Oh, for perfect. The we posted the link. Um, we've got the link for the Aurora pricing. Thank you for that link. And uh, the blog post. Perfect. Um, well, Nitesh, this is... I'm I'm excited for a lot of people um, because I know this is something. Anything that's really going to help them have more price predictable, um, anything cost optimization, I think is always a huge win for customers. Oh yeah, I think we're really excited about the price predictability and the savings. Uh, uh, they get again for IO, op, IO intensive applications, they get up to forty percent cost savings. That's massive for a lot wow. of customers, yeah. especially right now. So yeah, huge. really happy to share that with our customers. Awesome. Nitesh, thanks so much for being here today. Thank you for having me, Jillian, Jasmine, and Sydney. It's great talking to everybody. Thank Have you. Thank you.